Welcome in, everybody. It's the Craft Beer Republic. Thanks for drinking. Thanks for joining. I am Greg, and I'm being joined by the biggest firework in all of Milwaukee, and that is Flex. What's up, big fella? I'm not even that big. <laughs> but baby, you're a firework. Oh, uh, that's so sweet of you. Yeah. Just so like sweet. Katy Perry always says. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but not a uh, Katy Perry show. Not yet, at least. Give it time. What do you think? Katy Perry? I think she's hot. She's, she's oh, kinda, yeah. She's okay. super hot. I've had a couple of friends like, no, not into Katy Perry. I'm like, what is wrong with you? That's, yeah, uh, suspect. Yeah, very sus. Uh, anyways, welcome in. Like he said, not a Katy Perry show. Follow us on the socials at Craft Beer Republic and, of course, at Flex Me Beer underscores in between. Find us on the webs, all that good stuff. So much to get to today. First of all, if you haven't listened to last week's show, Vanessa jumped on the pod while Flex Hello. was busy working. Yeah, holla at your girl, as they say. Um, and hung out with Coley and myself for a bit. So go listen to that. And uh, yeah, we have a lot to get into. So before we do that, I must say, happy birthday, Flex. Oh, shucks. It's, uh, Thanks, by the time this airs, it'll be like a week and a half after your birthday. Yeah. But, uh, you know, as we record. It's just how things happen. Yeah. The schedule. But as we record, it's, it's Flexi's birthday. So everyone send him free beer. He loves receiving please free beer. Please don't do that. <laughs> please. Pretty please. <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. Uh, all right. Before we get into anything, let's find out what the birthday boy is drinking over there. In a world where craft beer is king. A world where muscles are bigger than growlers. Only one tongue can guide us. One man. One tongue. One tongue jobber. In this world, we must find out what is Flex drinking. All right. Well, uh, shout out to Mama Flex on this one. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen her in at least a week or so. Tell her I said hi. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Um, <laughs> so my mother went up to lacrosse for the weekend, which... If you're not from Wisconsin, you don't know what lacrosse is. Just know it's Correct. across the Mississippi from like Minneapolis. Is it lacrosse the Mississippi? Oh, ah. Fucking nailed it. I just <laughs> set you up. But lacrosse does have the world's largest six pack. Oh. If you look that up, it's actually uh, a really neat, uh, mo- mo- I don't know, monument or. It's like a tourist trap kind well, of thing. Uh, cl- yeah, a claim. Roadside uh, attraction. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of, it's a, it's a nice place. But, so she went up there and she said, hey, um, since your your birthday is coming up, I'm going to look for some beer for you, nice. which my mother never does. Uh, <laughs> my family really doesn't do, we're not uh, like Jehovah's Witnesses or anything like that, but like birthday <laughs> gifts. Like That's exactly what I was thinking was Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, I know. I know you are. Uh, they lost their way, you know, some years ago. So uh-huh. I was like, hey, that's kind of nice. So my mother went to Pearl Street Brewery. Hmm. Um, which is in Lacrosse, L.A. space, C R O S S E, makes no sense, but mm-hmm. you know. And uh, yeah, so she went to Pearl Street Brewery, and she brought me back Lina Lule. It is a classic IPA, and it is brewed with I don't even know what this is Northern Discovery hops. Hmm. So sounds made since up. I don't know what that is, I'll read the can. Wink, wink. <laughs> uh, it says. Lina Lul IPA, the only beer brewed with Northern Discovery hops grown exclusively in central Wisconsin. So there, I guess, makes sense now. Mm -hmm. Um, Featuring a crisp golden color. Check on the golden color. What do you think? Pretty golden copper. Yeah, I would say coppery. Copper, hint of amber. Yeah, maybe maybe kind of gold in the light. Um, And a unique aroma of lilac. Which grossed me out as I read the can, because I'm not <laughs> huge on, like, florally notes. Oh, sure. Um, and then it says, pear and bruised apple. This beer also imparts a pleasant bitterness. Unlike other hoppy beers, the aromatics will develop over time, becoming more pungent and changing form. You'll be wild about it. Um, so that's what the can reads. Untapped reads the same thing. Uh, it says 6.8% ABV. Uh, low on the totem pole, a, a three six seven. For a cumulative 8,000 ratings. Let's dive in. Let's yeah, dive into this birthday beer. Definitely getting the floral notes right away, but it's not like Bath and Body Works, like gross <laughs> Yankee Candle, like right. oh, boring. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Like super artificial. I guess it's kind of enjoyable. Somewhat. Um, well, uh, without further ado, happy birthday to the tongue jabber. 
nerd. Something like that. Um, floral notes follow suit. They're subtle. Slight bitterness to this guy. Um, not. I was expecting a little more from the can. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a little bit of that pear apple on the back end. Maybe it's going to change over time as I drink it. The, the flavors aren't mind blowing, but what's mind blowing to me is it's a real easy drinker. Okay. And that's not something you'd expect from like a, like a West coast, heavy bitterness, heavy pine. Uh, but this just like runs right down the gullet. Carbonation is low. The beer has great head. You can see the lacing already starting to form on top of the glass. Mm-hmm. You can see it. listeners can't. Sorry, right. listeners. Losers. Um, but to boot, I love that phrase. Uh, the can art's pretty gnarly. Oh, yeah. It's got this wolf kind of howling. Trippy. It's like trippy, like 60s, 70s-ish, and all these holographic blue hops in the, the purple background. I don't know. It's pretty yeah. neat. I think my mom did a, a pretty decent job on this one. Kind of reminds me of a black light poster. Yeah, that's exactly what it reminds you of, except like not a lot of black on the background. Right. Like a black light poster. Like those colors that they would put on a black light poster. Right. Very, very trippy uh, us. Yeah. The so. can version. So. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Thanks, so, Mama uh, Flex. Yeah, it, it was a really nice uh, nice thought. Yeah. What a sweet and now lead. she brought me back a, a pretty decent beer. So Yeah, pretty good. Hey, I'll, hey, my mom, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let her know, Greg. Yeah, would you? Next time you see her. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Shout out to Moravia. Moravia? Moravia? I don't know. Mel can fix that for me. New York for being our top listening city of last week. Yay! Yay! We spanning. We, we in the hood, in the hood. I don't know. I had to look it up. It's near like uh, Buffalo and stuff. So, okay. I do yeah. like wings. Oh, my favorite. Love They're me so some good. wingies. Love they gotta me be some done wingies. right though. Oh, for sure. The wings aren't crispy. I, I, they're not good. No, you know, I had some wings last week. I won't mention where, like they were cooked. Okay. As far as like the inside goes, but the outside was kind of like rubbery. Yeah. It's like, no fan. man, you need that crispy outside. That happened to me a couple of weeks ago. It was like 50 50 on like the outside crispiness to rubberiness. Yeah. And I was like, eh. but the, the wings itself, the sauces were good. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, is there anything wrong with the wing? I guess not because the insides cooked fine. The sauce was good, but just that, that not so appealing skin texture. Yeah. And some people like that, which again blows my mind. I mean, the world needs sociopaths to balance things out. <laughs> sociopaths or psychopath same thing one in the same especially when it comes to that yeah so uh, not an opath show though not yeah not a therapy <laughs> sesh or something uh so like i mentioned vanessa's on the show last week we had quite the uh the adventure when her and, and her husband were out here uh, mr vixen as it is we went to so many they on their west coast trip not all for with us went to 70 fucking breweries holy uh, shit yeah, with us alone, we went to Naughty Pine, Petals and Pints, Topa Topa, VCBC, Bell Ringer, Made West, Transmission, Casa Agria, Tarantula Hill. Uh, what do we go the next day? Institution, Ennegrin, and then the day after that, we went to Malibu Brewing and Lawless. Whew, I did not write that down. That was off the top of my head. <laughs> Holy balls. Yeah. Uh, did a lot of research while they were out here. They like to get like a flight. A lot of times they share it and then they move on. There's not like a, Hey, let's have three beers and on to the next place. So they were fairly sober at the end of the night, even though we went to so many places. Um, so yeah, a lot of research, had a lot of fun with those guys. One of the days we spent half the day in the pool after doing some research and barbecue. That's nice. And, that yeah, hung really out. Nice. Yeah. yeah. They like had a couple other friends session. Yeah. They had a couple other friends come out, uh, that they knew from the gram, um, hung out with them, Jenny and, and Ingrid, and, and just it was a good time, man. Just, just it's always fun bringing people together from the gram, it's the good side of the beer gram, right? The the good people. Yeah, the, a lot of times yeah. it can be annoying, <laughs> but sometimes it's really nice. This is one of those nice times. Well, that's awesome, man. I'm awesome. Yeah. To, uh, awesome to hear you had such a good time. I, little Flex had a great time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Little Flex uh, got he, to do a little research with us. Yeah. yeah. Little Flex looks like he has a skin disease at this point. Uh, cause he got spilt on at GABF and you know, I think, it, I think Chu actually messaged me oh. <laughs> and said that, uh, <laughs> you guys need to get a new one of those cause it's starting to look a, l- a little beat up. Yeah. Little flex really is doing some research. He's putting in the hard work. He's, he's you know, everywhere. I, I love the wear and tear. I'm not going <laughs> to, it's just, it's like road hard, hard, put away wet. Yeah. It's like, it's like a metaphor, right? For a living. That's true. <laughs> We all have a little scarring and, you know, 
both physical and mental. And little Flex has just showed his his wear. <laughs> Still I, gets up and he goes to the next brewery. That's right. <laughs> I, honestly, I'm surprised that he's lasted this long. I mean, he went to GABF with us. He's gotten to a ton of breweries out here. I think he even went up north with us at one point. Little so flexes, it's, it's not laminated, right? Is not just, in the slightest. <laughs> that is that makes it even more amazing. It is a piece of we printed your picture out on a piece of paper, <laughs> cut it out, glued it to a piece of cardboard, and then cut the cardboard out to match. Okay, that's why it stands so well. Yeah, it stands up because of the cardboard, but there is not a lick of plastic or lamination <laughs> or anything. A condom. There's no protection on little flex. He is he's barebacking. Ugh. Oh. Raw dog and little flex. What yeah. a bastard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He uh he goes hard. <laughs> oh. oh, but yeah, lots of research was had and it was it was fun times and uh didn't get too fucked up. I, it's the Saturday night where we did like all that stuff, we ended at T Hill. Apparently, like I was a little drunk. It really hit me at T Hill, which was our last spot, and like we Ubered home and sometime on the Uber ride home, which is only like four minutes, is when my recorder stopped working in my brain. And like the rest of the night is gone. Apparently when we got home, I uh, I was like, hey, let's have one more beer, which is never a good idea. Never. And the wife's like, oh, I don't know if we need it. What are you thinking? And I guess I tried to pull out a Woot Stout, which is like 13%. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. She's like, absolutely not. Get your ass to bed. <laughs> Just for the best. Did they have a favorite on the trip? You know, I asked them top five at one point. I was like, you don't have to pick your one, but like, what's your top five? And they named a couple. They named one from Sacramento, a couple from like up in Seattle. And they actually said Naughty Pine was one of them. And I forget the other one down. I think Made West. I think Naughty Pine and Made West were their favorites from down here, if I remember correctly. So okay. obviously, uh, Vanessa and, and uh, Mr. Mr. Vixen, let it me know if I'm wrong. But um, yeah, it was good times. So, Did they get to meet Spencer or was he not there? Well, he was not at, you know, it was the other Made West. It was the one that they don't brew at. So he oh, wouldn't okay, have been there. Okay. Yeah. So no, they did not get to meet Spencer, but you um, got to meet Britt when we were at Naughty Pine and hung That's out, awesome. took some pictures and uh, met Monica from Petals. She was actually over at Integrin when we hit Integrin. So got to meet her there and, uh, you know, a couple of brewers along the way we got to introduce them to. So it was fun. Good Very times. awesome, man. I'm glad yeah. it was an awesome time. Yeah. And then that was like way more fun than our fourth. Our fourth, we just like. Woke up early, went swimming to cool off the fellas. If you catch my drift, it's been hot as balls out here. <laughs> and uh, got home early, turned on like nine fans in the house, turned on some action movies. In fact, we did a, a national treasure like marathon. We watched the the two national treasures. I like those movies. I'd never seen them. They were fun. Big fan. They're yeah. they're fun. They're I, exciting. Yeah. I, I it was fun. So we put those on super loud just so the dog wouldn't hear the fireworks. It actually very successful. He heard very little fireworks that night. It worked out well. And, so our, our more fun was leading up to the 4th of July with them in town. So Heck good yeah. times. Yeah. How was your 4th? You guys, I know you said you were probably going to do a little birthday celebration, a little fireworks yeah, so watching. So the birthday celebration is put off for like, uh, till the 14th. Oh. So that's when everyone decided to get together for the, you know, we got three birthdays in the family for the month. So, mm-hmm. um, it was actually really nice to just be able to fucking relax. We went over to the in-laws or so we did the parade, woke up, did the parade. Kids love that shit. Yeah. Went to the in-laws after, stayed in the pool for like an hour or so. It was kind of drizzly sunny. It was it was really weird. Weird weather on the 4th. Uh, grilled out burgers, dogs, chicken sausages. We had a huge bowl of pasta salad. Like it was mm. an awesome lunch. And then hit up another party for a little bit afterwards. Uh, had a couple more beers there. Played a little, some bags, some cornhole or whatever you want nice. to call it. Um, Corns. And then just being out in the sun. Like it was that like um, the dangerous sun, right? Where it's like hazy outside. Oh, so it's you don't deceiving. Feel, yeah, right. So you don't feel like you're getting a lot of that sun. Mm-hmm. So by the time I got home from uh, the guy from work's house, it was like 430. The kids were sunk in their spots in the living room. My wife had her eyes closed sitting on the couch. <laughs> so I just read the room and I said, fuck this i'm closing my eyes too right so ne- next thing you know everyone's waking up it's like six o'clock and it's like oh what are we doing for dinner we never had <laughs> dinner plans <laughs> whoops so our fourth of july dinner uh was a, a frozen pizza nice <laughs> yeah it's just uh super relaxing yeah uh, a little di on the fourth of july yeah yeah but i picked up uh i picked up eagle park's rocket pop seltzer for okay. the day and uh, 
one of their IPAs called Goon Juice. So that was drink the seltzers in the pool, save the beers for the fireworks show nice. at night, which uh, we always sit at, uh, I shouldn't say we always. Last couple of years, we've been posting up shop on the uh, yard, lawn, grass area of our old high school. Oh, yeah. We're talking so, about that and how weird it is yeah, to drink at How weird school. it is to drink on school property. Yeah. Not to mention this year, the spot we had, because our original spot was taken. We got there a little late. Mm. Just a cop car, just sitting in the parking lot. Two <laughs> cops, just, they must have listened to the show. Just right behind us. You know, right. just, just hanging like, out. Uh, but hey, it's the 4th of July. It's like different yeah. laws. Doesn't right? count. Doesn't it doesn't count. count. Yeah. America doesn't count. Right. But I'm pretty sure all they were waiting for was uh, the fireworks to be done because they were the first car out because they had to get the lights on and direct everything Uh-oh. and like do the real shitty traffic, mm. which my, I got it. I don't know if you, you don't go out for fireworks. Do you? No. I mean, back in the day. Yeah. So here in town, I live in uh, a little village called Greendale. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you. FDR. <laughs> RIP. Okay. Um, it was part of like the post great depression movement oh uh that's how it was uh established any weasels so real small village town and they get all these little kid police officers in training to direct traffic oh sure they don't know what the hell they're fucking doing (laughs) and it is the absolute pits so this parking lot right i just just gotta get this off my chest yeah please just really grind your gears there's like an east lot that's like a lower level uh-huh and there's a west lot that's a higher level connected to the back lot of the high school okay so last year we made the decision which was wrong to park more towards the east lot which they sent everybody then east right yeah. right turns only right turns only out of the lot so then everybody on the upper level got to go west take left turns we we live that way so we were kind of bummed out got to mm-hmm take the whole long way around town so we're like oh we'll park on the upper level on the west side we'll fucking get out lickety split this little tiny little wannabe cop kid held his hand up at these cars in the lot i'm saying he wasn't even watching he's just Just ran him over hand up looking at all the other cars that the kids down at the other lot are just letting go both fucking ways so we sat for like 15 minutes with this guy just holding his hand up at the line (laughs) while all of these other cars just keep zooming by and zooming by and zooming by and it was terrible did you murder anybody you just got i didn't my wife actually i was (laughs) she rolled her window down and she started shouting at the the kid (laughs) and uh right after she did that he (laughs) he started waving people out of our line she's like he's like oh uh yeah about that yeah, she was she. Through. She wasn't having it. It was a long day for everyone. But yeah, uh, sounds like it. Yeah, well, we finally made it out, so that was good. But yeah, just get a get a plan in place. Yeah, something a little training or whatever. Yeah, I mean, just a little bit of training, and I'm sure they got walkies or something. Fucking something. Well, I know they have cell phones. Everybody's got a fucking phone. All right. Hey, you hold your line. I'm gonna send these people. Okay. All right, now you hold your line. I'm going to send these people. Right. Not that fucking hard. Right. If they can handle it at Disneyland, they can handle it at a fireworks thing. These kids suck. Sounds like <laughs> it. All right, well, that was my 4th of July. It was, well, it was pretty solid. It was relaxing. It was nice. nice. Other, other than the parking situation, sounds like a Other good than, the, yeah. And then we went yeah. home, lit off some fireworks. Kids love that shit. Oh, yeah. When um, I was a kid, that was my favorite thing. Oh, yeah. And they weren't even, like, great fireworks. Some of them were, were better than we thought, but yeah, my wife just went to Walmart, cleaned off the shelf because apparently they can sell fireworks at certain Walmarts here. Okay, sure, why not? Not yeah. here. Oh my god! Some counties are less restrictive, I guess. Mm. So yeah, it was nice. Yeah, good times. Well, congrats on having a relaxing birthday to go with it. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, before we get too far into things, I wanted to remind everybody about Magic Mind. See, I've been taking my Magic Mind, so I remembered. Coffee alone, it's like a coffee booster. Coffee alone wasn't uh, doing it for me. And I was having to go into that like three to four cup range per day. Start popping those magic minds between my first and my second. Capping at two. Two is my max, which is really good because it is so hot here. 
that like that third cup of coffee around 11 a.m. I was just sweating bullets the entire time. It was awful. That's the worst drinking coffee in, in hot weather. Oh, it's so bad. But I needed the coffee. So uh, by now I've been doing it. Man, it's been like a week and a half straight, I think. So now I'm starting to experiment like, oh, if I don't do it every day, do I feel any different? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like I said, improves coffee and, and uh, makes it last longer. It's not jittery. You don't get all like Red Bull rush after it. And the one thing I've been stressing, I think Flex is on board with this, is that it tastes pretty decent. The I don't taste the taste is there. Like it yeah. really is. Some of the reviews when we were talking about Magic Mind a few months ago, the reviews were a little rough on the taste. And I was like, oh, I hope this isn't disgusting. It's really not. I, I enjoy it. I don't mind it at all. See, what I love the most about it is the uh, the focus. Yeah. I'm somebody who can get very scatterbrained. Feel that. Um, knowing, like getting to work for the day, you know you have a lot to do. And you're like, okay, where should I start? I got this. I got that. Like trying to prioritize, trying mm-hmm. to figure out what. And then, honest to goodness, been shooting this thing about two weeks now, every morning. And it just brings like a sense of calming to the mind focus you're like all right i'm just gonna bang this out then i'm gonna bang that out get this done da, 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 da. down the line i've been thoroughly enjoying it yeah it, you know what it helps me remember like my to-dos like i'm not having to write down as much shit which maybe i should write down more things but it's helping me not need to write down like oh i need to do these three things today at work so that's been nice yep. too 100 percent agree to that yeah it's been great i love it um anyways no sugar it is keto friendly, nut free, vegan, paleo friendly, all that stuff has matcha in it, which I think we've discovered is probably like the main flavor point is like the matcha. Right, I right. think it's green, so it makes sense. Um, so if anything, if any of this is hitting home to you, you want to drink a little less coffee, you want to try and help your focus out, whatever it is, give them a try. Magicmind.com slash craft beer. No republic, just craft beer. Our code is craft beer20. You get either 48% off, up to 48% off your first subscription. Or 20% off a one-time purchase. Craft Beer 20, 48% off subscription, 20% off one-time purchase. And you don't like it, 100% money back guarantee. No questions asked. One hundo. <laughs> one hundo. And the other hundo is 100 days to send it back. So you actually get to hundred, try it out. 100, 100, 100, 100. <laughs> um, so, and oh, on top of that, they donate five cents of each bottle to mental health charities that help U.S. homeless communities. So don't forget, magicmind.com slash craftbeer. And use the code craft beer twenty two zero not spelled out. Um, speaking of magic mind and remembering stuff, uh huh. A couple of weeks back, you told me that you set somebody's foot on fire. Oh, <laughs> I, I I did. We were like going off the air, and you cut me off. You you played the music, right? Um, so in lieu of post Fourth of July, <laughs> yeah. What the hell happened? I don't even remember what brought this up, but yeah, we were going off the air and I was like, oh yeah, I set someone's foot on fire. And I was like, all right, good night, everybody. Um, yeah, this was, a I don't know. I think this was like 2021. It was kind of like COVID-ish, not full COVID, I think. Terrible year. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> except that was the year you joined the show. Oh, okay. No, not right the worst year. year. Not, right not year. the worst year. I think that was 21, right? It's been three years. Three years? Yeah. Wow, look at that. Yeah. Anyways, we're over at uh, Big Dick Nick and Coley's house, and we're having a little uh, barbecue and swim sesh, and they have a little fire pit in the corner of their backyard, and there's some other people over as well. It wasn't just the four of us, and at one point, Nick uh, Nick has a tendency to pass the fuck out. He works such crazy hours. It's not just the alcohol. It's actually a lot of how fucking tired he is all the time. The alcohol doesn't hurt, though. And uh, we wanted to do a little fire and he comes out and he kind of like half starts it. And I was like, well, this is never going to pick up. We need like the fire to actually start. It was like going out over and over again. I was trying to like get it going. It wasn't going. Had I had a few beverages? Yes. Was I super drunk? I don't think so. (laughs) Little buzz. And so the way Nick, this is going to get dumber and dumber as I tell the story. The way Nick starts fires is he has a can of, uh, 93 octane gasoline for his oh, dirt bikes. Yeah, that's genius. Yeah. So he will squirt a little hayo on the fire pit full of wood. <laughs> and then, of course, take the gas can very far away and light the fire. And he didn't put enough on to get it really started. And so I noticed that like only one little corner of the fire pit had a fire going in. It. And I thought, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour just a little bit over in this empty corner where there's no fire. 
And then I'll get one. I'll take the can away, get a piece of wood that's on fire and bring it to that corner. And, you know, well, we're going to have a good fire. Well, as I was pouring, uh, the fire got attracted to itself and came over (laughs) and started lighting the gas can on fire. My God, Greg. (laughs) So, I mean, to my credit, I was a quick thinker. But what I did was I jerked the can away from the fire as quickly as possible. And then I put my hand over even top of though, the nozzle. Even though it's still on fire, right? It, oh, it's actively on fire. Yeah, like the nozzle oh. of the gas can is on fire. But I know that this is not nearly as bad as it's going to be if it travels down into the container. Then we're going to die. So as soon as I, I rip it away from the fire, put my hand on the nozzle, and the fire goes out. It was very quick. I, I handled it, is, it very it's quickly. pretty genius to think of that. I'm, well, I'm glad I wasn't hammered. Otherwise, I wouldn't have thought of it. But you really weren't that drunk. That's what I'm saying. But in the process of ripping the can away from the fire before I was able to put my hand on it, that jerking motion, hey, yo, I squirted a little gas out and it landed on one of the girl's feet. (laughs) Oh, my God. Her name is Francesca. And I didn't even realize it until she's like, whoo, whoo. And she's over here like (laughs) smacking her foot out. (laughs) And I was like, what happened? She's like, you set me on fire. And I felt really bad. But the funny story on well, top of that. Because nobody feels good about setting another yeah, human on I mean, fire. Well, unless they meant to. And I did not wow. mean to. Let me tell you. I don't even think they feel good. No, that's either. awful. I'm joking. But the funny thing is, so a couple of weeks later, she started working as the social media person for 14 Cannons back when they weren't a bad word. R.I.P. And I was talking to Nick over there and he goes, yeah, we just hired a new social media girl. And I was like, oh, who'd you get? And he goes, oh, her name is Francesca. I said, oh, I just set her foot on fire last week. <laughs> but he's like what the fuck so of course i had to tell the whole story so yeah so that was story i forget how that got brought up last or two weeks ago but yes i did accidentally set francesca's foot on fire <laughs> sorry Francesca. Never done that. yeah i don't think there's anything permanent but you can let me know if i'm wrong oh. i've branded somebody before that was... like on purpose yeah we used to <laughs> yeah so we never drank in high school i was like a real uh goody two shoes uh-huh I had two brothers, one older, one younger, who were very uh, indulgy. Okay. They did all the bad stuff for you. In everything, right. So my friends and I, uh, like, we just, we're like jackass, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we would just do dumb shit. We used to, like, emulate jackass and, like, film and stuff. Completely sober. Uh, So we used to have bonfires and always would pull all-nighters so you'd get a little bit delirious. So one night, we just talked my best friend into uh if we just held the end of a stick in a fire and got it like fucking like red burning hot sure that he we would brand his ass with the stick and he pulled his pants down willingly (laughs) and uh it took about half a second for him to just shoot across the yard (laughs) i bet (laughs) oh yeah it was it was pretty instantaneous as you would think does he still have a scar uh, he still has got a scar nice yeah we did some of that stuff too. We'd film it like like we were doing jackass. Like what a horrible, okay. what a bunch of idiots. One of our friends, um, you know, if you get like Zippo lighter fluid, you can butane. Is it butane? The Zippo butane. lighter stuff. It might be. It's it's fun to fuck with because like you can put it on your hand, light your hand on fire, and then smack it out, and it won't burn. Right. And you've got like a good, you know, like five Mississippi before it burns through that oil or gas or whatever it is, and so. <laughs> One of my stupid friends in high school decided it'd be funny for the video to squirt that all over his crotch, his pants, no. and oh, light his crotch okay. on fire, and then, you know, give it a good five Mississippi and, and, of course, put it out. Well, it was not the fire that got him. It started to get a little hot, so he went to smack the fire out, but, of course, he smacked oh, himself right in the dick. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, the fire didn't get him, but his smack to his fella <laughs> sure did. <laughs> so, yeah, we did a lot of stupid shit in high school. Good times. Uh, all right, before I tell you about my beer, we got an email from a listener. I guess this is from a couple of weeks ago. I apologize. I usually forget what we talked about three minutes after we finished talking about it. Uh, so I appreciate I can, I can attest to that. Yeah, I appreciate the listeners keeping us straight. So we got an email. This is from a, a guy named Brandon. He says, is weed legal in Idaho? I guess we we're talking about weed in Idaho. And he says, hey, Flex and Greg, love listening to you two make fools of yourselves every week. Thanks. That's what we do. Yeah, that's what we're here for. <laughs> At least we're not stomping our dicks out. 
<laughs> a couple of weeks back, you were talking about hop production losses and the idea of marijuana growth was brought up as a possible reason. I oh, did bring that up. You're I right. slightly remember that now. Uh, let me tell you, marijuana is definitely not, in all caps, legal in Idaho, not even medical. Cheers, your friend in craft, Brandon. Oh, there so you have it. Are just, they're just going down. Yeah, I guess they're just growing less hops, not more weed. Well, terrible. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks for writing in. Uh, mail, craftbeerpoke.com. If anybody ever has an email for us, feel free to email it. Or, of course, yeah. 805-538-BEER is that voicemail line. Uh, all right. Before we get to ludicrous libation law, I'm going to make a call to the pen over here because I am damn thirsty. He calls to the bullpen for beer. One thing I left out about our uh, beer research with Vanessa and Mr. Vixen was John, listener John, who met up with me a few weeks ago and, and was gracious enough not to murder me. Ah, Remember yes, that? the non-murderer John. Yeah, the non-murderer John. I, I don't hang out with murder John anymore. He's he's a different <laughs> story. Uh, anyways, he found out we were going to be out in Ventura, and he was passing through, and he goes, hey, do you mind if I stop and give you something? And I thought, well, this is where he's going to end up murdering this me. This is but, where he turns into murder John. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like Clark Kent. You know, he goes into a phone booth, and he comes out as murder John. And I thought, all right, well, I got Nick here with me, so maybe you know he'll have my back, as well as Mr. Vixen. So hopefully... Hopefully I'm okay. Uh, no, so he met us at transmission, and uh, they they ate, and they came up. We were up in like the 21 and over, so he can bring his kid. But he came up afterwards, and and he brought me a beer. He actually brought me two beers, and one of the beers he brought is what I'm drinking. So first of all, thank you, John, for bringing me those beers. That was super nice of you. Second uh, off, thanks for not murdering him. Yeah, uh, super nice of you not to murder me as well. <laughs> <laughs> And he did make a guy. He's like, hey, guess what? I didn't murder you. I was like, yeah, I know. You clearly you've been listening. So. <laughs> so here we go. Anyway, so I am, thanks to John, non-murder John, <laughs> I am drinking Foggy Window from Monkish Brewing Company. He's bringing the goods. He brought me some money. Uh, that is good stuff. Yeah. Double hazy IPA. It is 8.1%, has 80 IBUs, and out of over 19,000 ratings, it has a 4.41. So There's a lot of ratings. That's a yeah. high rating. High rating, lot of ratings. So you know this thing's a fucking banger. They say Nelson, Galaxy, and Extra Citra Hops. That's all they fucking say about it. Good. I tell you, on the schnoz, I get a little tropical, but I'm really getting some stone fruit coming through. High yeah. stone fruit and like a hint of like alcohol and something. Like just a little, smells a little boozy, if that makes okay. sense. On yield, tongue jobber. I mean, it, it follows suit. A lot of stone fruit. Some good dank. I mean, the 80 IBUs is actually showing up a little bit. Some good dankness on the finish for being such a, and you can see this here, being such a fucking. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, such a foggy IPA. Um, it's gorgeous. The mouthfeel on this is pillowy soft. Like, I could just take a little snoozer on this beer. You're it talking is so, like memory foam? Oh, yeah. Tempur-Pedic, baby. <laughs> Not the Amazon knockoff bullshit. Like, full-on Tempur-Pedic. Memory foam. It is pillowy soft. That's odd. Yeah. The 8.1%, uh, you taste it. It's not like boozy, but you you know it's there. It's not a little, hidden. A little burny? little hint. Just a hint. I mean, it's not like, ooh, anything like that, but you, okay. you get it. A little hint of burn on the end there. So all in all, really good. I understand why it's got that 4.4. Uh, delicious. Haven't had myself a monkish in quite some time. So thanks to John for A, not killing me, and B, dropping this beer by. Very nice of you. Yeah, that's super rad. And yeah. Now he's got a cool nickname. Not Murderer John. Not Murderer John. Yeah. Hey, that's... you know what? Let's let's hope he keeps that nickname. Could you imagine introducing yourself to to somebody? Oh, <laughs> hey, this is my friend uh Not Murderer John. <laughs> oh, so you're not going to murder me. No, nope, yeah. that's that's not who I am. <laughs> right. Hey, why do you call him that? Well, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out he doesn't murder people. Yeah. And his name's John. Right just seemed fitting it's kind of uh, catchy it is maybe we need like a song for non-murder john or something non-murder john <laughs> <laughs> doesn't murder people <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> so bad we'll work on cut, that cut cut yeah well, <laughs> chat gpt we need your help uh all right ludicrous libation law this one shout out to zach and uh, the homies in indiana by the way zach has a new podcast the spiritual advisors and uh, or spirit advice. Oh shit! Now I'm getting it right. Anyways, it's all about spirits. Um, they do a really cool thing on drinking their show. Drinking spirits. Yeah, drinking spirits. They're not yes, super religious yeah. or anything like that. 
Uh, they do a really cool thing on their show where they bring they each bring like a, a beverage and they say like, oh, this is a beer. You all taste it and tell me what you think it is and tell me what you think the ABV is or this is a whiskey or this is or just a spirit, you know, drink it. Tell me what you think it is, what the ABV, what the price point is. And then they bring in a wild card. So it'd be like, this is a, you know, fucking glass of Malort. Tell me, what you, you know, but they won't say that. It's like, tell me what you think. Yeah. So I actually like it. I think it's really fun concept. If if you and I are in the same room together, I'd, I'd do some blind stuff like that with you. I think that's really cool. So anyways, that is cool. I, like uh, that. Either, I think it's a spiritual advisors. I'm so sorry if I'm fucking that up, um, but it's only on uh, Spotify for now. So you got to look for it there. Anyways, back to ludicrous libation law. Indiana finally has reinstituted happy hour. That's great. Yes. They didn't have happy hour for, for so long. And as of July 1st, they now have happy hour again. Under the new laws, bars can offer specials four hours. <laughs> Under the new laws, see? <laughs> bars can offer specials. Extra, extra, four, read all about it. <laughs> four hours a day, up to 15 hours a week, except between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. Also, there are no two for one or bottomless drink specials. Indiana Restaurant and Lodging Association has been working closely with businesses to make sure owners know all the guidelines. So this was as of July 1st. So uh, go get your happy hour, you Indianans. Yeah, that's great. Dollar off, $2 off, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, whatever it is. Get it. Yeah, get it. Get yeah. it. Uh, Any kind of deal on alcohol in a establishment? Oh, yes. Sign me up. Sign me up. That's why we do it. <laughs> nobody wants to pay full price for booze. No. <laughs> Honestly, nobody does. Mm-mm. Not one bit. Um, all right, a little news before we get up out of here. TikTok. I don't TikTok. Do you TikTok? Uh, zero TikTok. Yeah. I, I don't do the TikToks. Uh, they have opened up their ad platform to alcohol brands in the U.S. Before you couldn't advertise alcohols, and now you can. Um, maybe, I, may, maybe we should TikTok because Instagram sucks for that. Yeah, they like to shadow ban alcohol things yes. and all that Very shit. So. But yeah, uh, t- maybe titties, they're very much up on that. Instagram, they, they're all, yes, all about titties. They love titties. promoting the titties. Right, yeah. As long as you don't show nipple, you can show like 98% of your tit, areola and all, but as soon Except, as that nipple comes have out. Have you seen, so the breastfeeding videos became a big thing? Did you see this? I did not. So breastfeeding reels became like a huge thing, and there's like some moms out there like posting, re- like, you know, like their kid. Right, just breastfeeding. Feeding. Yeah. So then all of these uh, only, or let's call them content creators. Okay. Will hold like baby dolls. Uh, and pull uh, out. To try and fool the algorithm? Pull, yes, because they will not take it down because it, it is uh, discrimination or something like that. That's so so the, the algorithm doesn't realize it's a fake kid. Right. So then it's just like, oh, hey, here's my titty. <laughs> and a fake baby. And a fake baby. <laughs> Which so, is so weird. Yeah. So that's that's not going to do it for me. Sorry, nope, content nope. creators. So so many yeah. things have uh, not done it for me, and that is one of them. Yes, towards the top. That and feet. Yeah, that's uh, that'll be a no for me, dog. Bre- <laughs> it's so funny. Breastfeeding is so uh, not sexy at all. Well, right. It's like- and it's not meant to be, obviously. I, I but I love the whole thing where it's like, oh, you can't breastfeed in public. Are you getting a boner from this? Like, what is right. wrong like, with you? Like, who is like trying to sneak a peek? Like, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I'll take seconds. You yeah. know, like <laughs> save some for me, kid. <laughs> oh, guys are horrible. Yeah, it's it, uh, yeah. Anyways, not a mom show except for not, flexes. Well, damn, oh yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. Well, not a breastfeeding show. Uh, Kieran has decided to move their U.S. production of beer from Anheuser-Busch to New Belgium in 2025, which makes sense because they fucking own New Belgium. Right. So I was going to say it's like a whole thing. So yeah. Like, their contract with AB expires at the end of the year, so they're going to be moving everything over to New Belgium. So come next year, if you're at sushi drinking yourself some Kieran, it'll be coming from Colorado. I do cool. Sapporo. I, what do I, do? I do Kieran. Uh, Kieran Light is what I usually do. Okay. Uh, Sapporo's, you know, I'll I'll do that also. But Kieran Light, I like is the usually... big like twenty two ounce bottles that Sapporo does. Yeah, we um we get looks when we go to sushi because we walk in. We're right here to fuck shit up. No, we walk in and as soon as we sit down, we'll get a large Kieran Light and a hot sake for for the wife and I to share. 
Okay. But of course, we're sharing the bombers. We're going to get a second Karen Light. We usually get a second hot sake, too. And they look at us like, you raging alcoholics. Come on now. Yeah, it's crazy. The sushi um, place we go to, they advertise uh, like beer specials and stuff. Oh, yeah. They don't have. I wish they had beer specials. And they have like boxes of sake stacked up uh, by the like against the wall oh. every single fucking day. Yeah, I mean, look, they're happy to sell it to us, but every, a couple of the employees look at us like, are you going to be able to drink all this? I'm like, oh, I think, we they re- I think these people realize uh, we're a business in Wisconsin. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> all there is to do. Right. It's, it's everybody does it. Yeah. Uh, we'll end it with this one. A drunk American Airlines passenger reportedly exposes himself and forces an emergency landing. Oh, you know what? Oh, what? I just thought of that. Uh, Scott is out of the country. Do you think this could be him on a flight somewhere? <laughs> God damn it. Keep it in your pants, Scott. Come on, Scott. Lightweight. Uh, here we go. Neil McCarthy, 25 of Oregon. Okay, it's not Scott. Was arrested and charged with indecent exposure in relation to the incident aboard American Eagle Flight 3921, which was flying from Chicago to M- Manchester, New Hampshire. Was that like a 45-minute flight and you couldn't keep it in your pants? Uh, but was forced to divert to Buffalo. Another Buffalo reference, according to an American Airlines spokesperson. According to the complaint, McCarthy told police during questioning that he likes to drink Jack and Cokes, and they had several before boarding his flight in Portland, and then several more during his layover in Chicago. <laughs> McCarthy I'd, l- stated, I'd love to see the credit card statements on that. <laughs> it's like 17 Jack and Cokes. Right. $800. Yeah, later. cost of two mortgages. <laughs> McCarthy stated that during the flight, he got up to use the restroom, and when he came back, he was, quote, flicking the bean. Due to, a, <laughs> due to a medical urination problem. <laughs> Where are you now? First of all, I thought that, that had a very different meaning. That is a female usage term. That's what I thought. Unless, but, he, unless you know, maybe he's just not packing. <laughs> yeah, to me, that, that says a lot about you, bud. Uh, police say that when they boarded the plane, they obtained a cell phone photo from a passenger in row two that showed McCarthy exposing himself and urinating on the plane. Come police on. obtained statements from staff, including a flight attendant who initially pointed McCarthy out to law enforcement. You snitch. McCarthy was charged under Title 49 U.S. Code Section 46506 with exposing his penis. He faces a maximum penalty of six months in prison and a $5,000 fine. Man, so it was just out there for everyone to see. It, it was out there for everyone to see, uh, as well as his peepees. Could you imagine that story, though? Like, you're just some innocent passenger on that plane. Yeah, what do you do? You can tackle the guy? He's got his dick out, and he's pissing like, everywhere. Like, imagine you're on the plane for work, you know, and you don't make it <laughs> to your next stop to make the meeting, and your boss calls, and you're like, boss, you're never going to believe this. Right. Uh, <laughs> guy, I was on this plane, I swear to yeah. God. This Drunk guy. Guy, guy, wasn't guy me. Pulls, pulls his dick out. I swear yeah. to God. Starts pissing everywhere. Pulls his dick out. They got to land in Buffalo. (laughs) Uh, I'm getting some wings. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You got it at that point. (laughs) Yeah, what an insane story. Uh, Have you ever thought about taking your dick out on an airplane? I mean, I haven't. I don't know if I should. I I guess the statute of limitations has passed because it's been like 15 years. But I did have a girl (laughs) once request a blanket from the flight attendant. No. And I think you can fill in the rest with your imagination. Well, so technically, yes, I have. <laughs> okay. Okay. Never mind. Actually, that. it was done for me. I should say that it was done for me. I, I was not the culprit. <laughs> Plausible deniability. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, you know, yeah. it's a good flight. I'm just going to go fuck myself. <laughs> I had someone to do it for me. It was great. <laughs> oh, but you know what? Not a whipping it out show. Airplane show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All those things. I was like, how do I say this? Uh, all right, this feels like a great time to hit some music and get out of here. Well, and I want to now let you let everybody know the most secretive story of your life. <laughs> oh no, there's way there's way worse stories Jesus. than that. <laughs> that was a good story. Anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for all that shit. Follow us at Craft Beer Republican, of course, at Flex Me Beer underscores in between. Uh, 805-538-BEER, mail at craftbeerrepublic.com. I think that's everything. I hope everyone is staying super duper hydrated out there. Way to, way to change it up, pal. Sorry. Is that too weird? <laughs> you know what? On that note, good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.